I'm Adam Housley, and you're in the strategy room. There are growing calls in several states to step up security measures at military recruiting centers after the deadly rampage in Tennessee last week. Governors in six states are now ordering their National Guardsmen to be armed at the centers, and now some members of Congress are calling for a nationwide end of gun-free zones at these locations. Here with Reaction are political strategists David Mercer and Brad Blakeman. Welcome to, welcome to you both. Thank you. Good to be with you. All right, guys. So, you know, you know, the, the obvious question is, is, is it time to change gun-free zone policies at recruiting centers? But as a part of that, we also have to keep in mind that no one was shot and killed at the recruiting centers. It actually happened at the second location. So uh, my first question is the obvious one. Uh, should, this, should these gun-free zones go away? David? Well, I think that's under consideration, as you mentioned. And in the president's remarks, uh, he called on the Department of Defense to, of course, look at the uh, at what happened in uh, Chattanooga and to uh, address it in a way that would also not only be with regard to Chattanooga, Chattanooga but all our defense uh, uh, physical properties around the country. So I think that you will see some changes um, and whether or not it includes gun-free zones um, I think is up for consideration. But at this point, I'm not sure that that is the, put it this way, the end-all or be-all uh, or panacea to preventing what happened uh, in Chattanooga. You know, Brad, for a lot of people, they found it interesting and even surprising to find out that our military wasn't armed at some of these locations. Um, in fact, a lot of people felt that they probably would have been. Um, so what do you think about the possibility that now a lot of states, again, our governors are calling for this and there's a chance that maybe nationwide this could be the, could be the case? Well, the governor shouldn't be calling for it. The Pentagon should be smart enough and the president to, to arm our people doing their jobs, especially when the enemy has targeted uh, people in uniform here in America. Our enemy has said to, to those who seek to do us harm, they should be the targets, people in uniform, first responders. So having known that, why aren't they armed already? And you know, I was in Penn Station yesterday and surrounded uh, in Penn Station amongst Amtrak police and U NYPD were National Guard people, armed. They're protecting us, yet they can't protect themselves. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. Of course, those who are opposed to any idea of arming National Guardsmen or recruiters or whoever they happen to be, especially at the offices, they'll say that, you know, this will only make the situation worse. David? Well, I, uh, there's some uh, truth to that. And you want to minimize, again, not add to the problem. Um, but at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I think deferring to the Department of Defense and coming up with a policy that seeks to protect and avoid situations like this, be it certain uh, um, uh, individuals uh, having uh, uh, arms uh, and able to protect themselves. I don't think, as Brad had alluded to, and I agree with them, that you should have governors in a patchwork fashion from one state to another arming National Guard, others not arming National Guard. Let's have an overarching policy uh, coming out and, and remedy to this by the Department of uh, Defense. Brad, everything seems to be overarching these days, whether it's be military or, or, for that matter, just about any topic. When it comes to this, though, um, I, I guess the, the, the question would be, uh, is there a harm? I mean, these are men and women who are trained in weaponry. Um, this is what they do for a living. What's the harm in having them be armed at locations? And the detractors would say it's, it's only making it worse. Absolutely. Look, um, police are armed. Does it deter crime? You bet it does. Would it increase crime if they weren't? Of course it would. And, and if we know they're targeted by our enemy, as you pointed out, Adam, they're the most qualified and trained with arms. Why shouldn't they be protecting themselves as well as those who come to visit their offices and sign up? Also, you know what really irks me is uh, the Pentagon has told our recruiting stations not to dress in uniform. That's crazy. Of course we want them dressed in uniform, and of course we want them armed. When people go in to join, they come to join. They want to see the uniform. They want to meet our soldiers as they are, not uh, in, some, right. in, in some civilian dress. So we are, we, are, we are bowing to our enemy by not arming our people and not giving them the ability to use every tool in the toolbox to get people to join up and, and to be proud of their service. David, uh, both of you guys quickly on an answer on this one. Why is the focus on these recruiting centers 
when there really hasn't been a focus on the fact that this gunman in Chattanooga drove through a fence or threw into a location at a, at a second location and, and did the damage. He killed the people there, and there's been no question about security there. It's, it's a bit surprising to some of us who were not in Chattanooga that that has not been a topic. Well, I think it goes to, in, point, in part, what Brad had alluded to is, you know, why aren't uh, uh, servicemen and women allow, you know, uh, given the capacity to defend themselves? Now, that said, um, you know, again, it goes back to the zones um, of not having arms and so forth, um, and that they, they have to uh, look at and revise. Um, I think, though, that, you know, with regard to, um, you know, arming everybody, um, you know, the point being that in... England, for instance, you don't have the police carrying arms and they have uh, they don't have such a high crime rate. That said, I think, again, deferring to the Department of Defense to address this both on their physical properties and at recruiting stations needs a uh, focus and attention to make sure that this does not happen again. Brad, quickly, uh, I'm not going to go back to the England thing because I know stabbings went up for like something like 2,000% sure. after the guns were banned. But, but Brad, Brad, I mean, to you quickly, uh, why hasn't the second location, why hasn't there been talk about security there at that naval facility? And there should have been. Uh, there needs to be a top-to-bottom review by the Pentagon of all facilities uh, I agree. The, uh, domestically. And once that assessment is made, we need to then prioritize and harden those, those, uh, those locations. There's no doubt about it. The fact that we're not hearing about it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be done. All right. Brad Blakeman, David Mercer, thanks for uh, joining us. We appreciate it. Check out more on this topic and all the others on foxnews.com for this developing story. I'm Adam Housley, and you're watching The Strategy Room.